It's been six days now since Simon last spoke to his fiancée, Irina. A Ukrainian national, she had been with friends in the southern port city of Mariupol when the Russian invasion began. The last communication we had was last Wednesday morning. She was out shopping with her friend and her mum to buy fresh drinking water and sanitary products. And that was the last we heard. It's cold. <laughs> Smiling, giggling, joking about the weather and explaining her plan to buy a new lamp. This was the last video Irina sent to Simon. <laughs> we are going uh, to the shopping mall. She signed off with a plan to speak to him later that day. OK, see you in the evening. Bye. <laughs> Simon says he's barely slept since and is obsessively following rolling news updates in the vain hope of some sign that she's still alive. I'm absolutely beside myself. The all points of, of contact are, are out there. Her face is out there. Her, her poster's out there. We've got all the aid agencies looking for her. I just hope she's there. I'm sending messages to her still daily that although they're being received, she hasn't read them, she hasn't acknowledged them. So I'm beside myself. I've got no words for it. I'm just distraught. It is sometimes easy to think of the horrific images filling our TV and phone screens as a faraway conflict which doesn't affect our relatively comfortable lives. But meeting Simon today, seeing his worry and heartbreak, really makes the war feel much closer to home. The couple, who both teach English, met four years ago through an online forum. Simon describes Irina as the best thing in his life. If only there was some point of contact, if she could like, let herself be known that she's OK and she's alive. I've got other people that are over there with Acon boys that are looking for her. As soon as I know that she's alive and well and where she's at, we can find her, we can get, get her home. I miss her so much. I miss her so much. Sam Blackledge, ITV News, in Ilfracombe.